Today, we're unboxing the new HP Tuners MPVI-3, talking about its new features, all that you're gonna get, so stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and yes, I have got one of the new MPVI-3 from HP Tuners in my hands thanks to our sponsor as usual, HP Tuners. They've been with us a couple years now. I love those guys and I know what a lot of you are thinking right off the bat and we're going to talk about that. Why is there an MPVI-3 already? We just came out with the 2 Plus. Good question, and I don't know if you're gonna see this information out there a lot. HP tuners may not want me to tell you this, but I'm going to anyways. Basically what it boils down to is the chip shortage was really impacting inventory on the MPVI 2 Plus. The engineers went back to the drawing board. They looked at what they could do to change the internals of the MPVI units so they would have inventory to actually build these things. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. I have the last Oh, probably six months or, or more, you have not been able to get your hands on an interface. It's just been a drought out there. And so, as I said, the solution was to look at why, what chips were being used by other manufacturing processes that were holding up uh, the production of the interface units. But there is a couple benefits that's gonna come with the MPVI-3. So let's go down to the table, let's get a closer look. We'll open this up, see what all is in the box, and we'll talk about what's changed. Okay, first and foremost, the garage is a wreck. There's so much going on right now, I just, I'm running out of room. I don't know what, what to do, I, I need a bigger garage. If anybody's got one they wanna send my way, just let me know. But let's talk about the new features on the MPVI-3 versus like the MPVI-2 or the MPVI-2 Plus. And listen, if, if you know, one of the big things is if you're doing next generation tuning stuff, if you're doing your uh, side by sides, if you're doing modern vehicles, anything built here in the last five to 10 years, you, you're gonna have to need one of the new interfaces. They just, you know, the old stuff still works on the old stuff, but for all the new stuff, you, you need the new stuff. Uh, behind that, they have doubled the storage on these things. There's internal storage on the early models, the 2 and the 2 Plus. It was 4 gigs. Now it's up to 8 gigs. And that's for doing the standalone data log and stuff like that. That's the real kicker of this ordeal, though, is the standalone data, standalone data logging, the pro features, as they've been called in the past, now standard. Used to be an extra fee that you would pay on top of it, and you would unlock standalone data logging, uh, the analog input stuff. All those pro features now come standard in the base price. Listen, you don't get the dongle uh, that comes, it's like 20 bucks extra. Make sure that if you decide to buy the dongle for the analog, analog input or the CAN bus uh, interface that is part of the pro features, that you get the one that is the, they call it the ProLink Plus. It's the one that has the little round connector as opposed to the square connector on there. Uh, because they probably still sell some of the square connectors for the guys with the MPVI-2s, but the ProLink Plus is the one that came with the MP P MPVI-2+. Plus. I'm just going to drop the MPVI off of this moving forward, so if you hear me talk about the 2, the 2+, plus, or the 3, you'll know this is what we are talking about. Uh, that's the big stuff that we probably care about the most as tuners is the Pro features being free, standalone data logging is free, and we have more memory. On top of it though, the standard log data logging is quicker. Uh, so that something that they've upgraded as far as the chipset goes is going to allow you to get higher resolution data and more data when doing the standalone data logging. So just a big benefit over all the previous devices, getting that stuff free, getting more memory, and getting the quicker data logging. You're gonna see a lot of this on the 442 project whenever we get our uh, ECM installed on that as part of the swap. We're going to be exclusively using the three to do that. And then and last but not least, and probably something that's a little bit less focused on what we do is the data logger or the uh, accelerometer in here is now a high resolution accelerometer. And so that just means that you're going to get more accurate uh, acceleration data, speed, things like that. I know some of you guys use the Track Addict app to uh, you know monitor what's going on. And, and you can tie those into your data logger also. So we might play around with using the acceleration feature in the data logger to kind of give us a better idea whenever we're under hard acceleration to see how the car reacts. 
but generally we can look at things like throttle input and RPM. So maybe not as important on that side of it for us guys that are just using it for tuning, but for guys that are using it for optimized, maybe on a track car or something like that, you do get the benefit of a high-speed accelerometer. So that all being said, let's crack this baby open, take a look at what's inside, what it comes with, and as usual, kind of looks like the, uh, the two plus box. Neat design, got the three on there. Boop. Got your information on the back, including the serial number to activate your uh, device whenever you get online. I'll have to do that later. Non-returnable if the box is open. Well, it's non-returnable. Oh well, okay, let's see what we got. We got a quick start guide here. And if we open up the quick start guide, it's basically going to walk you through credits and licensing, how to purchase your credits, and then, of course, how to register your device by going onto the website and uh, creating your account, adding your device on there. And then don't forget, whenever you have a new device, whenever you open up the scanner in the, or the editor for the first time, you need to resync the device. It's over there in the uh, support menu or help menu. So we've got our device our se itself. Uh, I can't tell if it's any different from the 2 Plus. Uh, it looks exactly the same in every way, except it has a 3 on it. Not that that's a bad thing. Some of the things I liked about the 2 Plus more than the 2, the connection is on the end. That little barrel connector for the Pro Link is on the end. A lot of more of you are going to be using that now. Uh, and of course, it's just a nice small device that you can stash away anywhere. So I like to use a remote OBD2 cable to put it in the, you know, the center console and things like that. Just got one button, as usual, and this is going to be for syncing our Bluetooth stuff like that. We do have the two LED lights, though. We've got a Bluetooth light and a status light on it. So let's open up. There's, there's side number one and side number two. We'll go with side number one because we're conformist sheep, and that's what we do. Side number one. We got some stickers, so free horsepower. Good, good looking out on HP tuners for sending out free horsepower with their MPVI. So even if you don't know how to tune, you pick up 10 horsepower right there. A uh, blue and a black one from the looks of it. I have to find something to put those on. And then we've got a USB cable. Uh, it's a little bit different than in the past. A little bit heavier duty USB cable. And it's gonna be USB-C to A. Which is all right. I mean, a lot of laptops now though are gonna be C to C, so might question why we're still throwing A out, but of course the software requirements on these are so low that you can use this on a real old laptop, so A is probably the right way to do it. You're gonna get faster data if you're going C to C on a newer laptop though, so just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, little heavier duty cable than in the past, uh, but it still has the uh, logo, the HP Tuners logo on the A side, which is cool, so you know they're getting them custom made for this setup. And we'll dive into box number two. Doesn't sound like there's a whole lot going on over in this one. Oh, it's just our keychain. So uh, in the past, they've included these. You know, I don't think that there's any way to really hook your device onto a keychain. So it's more of just a way of saying thank you for buying the device. So that's all that comes with this. Of course, you know, as well as I know, everything that this thing does is all tied up into the software. That's where it's important. Uh, the big thing about that, you gotta remember, is that the software is being updated constantly. Constantly, constantly, and if you don't believe me, uh, they pushed out in a uh, beta version last week. It messed up the virtual torque editor and then a day later they pushed out another beta to solve that issue. That's the thing is if you're on the stable version, yeah, there's a long time in between. They probably go through, who knows, 10, 15 different betas in between stable versions. Uh, so if you want to stay on the bleeding edge, play around with the beta. That's what we use out here at the garage because we always like having access to new features as soon as they come out. But bear in mind, sometimes some of those bugs work themselves into the beta feature. And so if you're worried about, stay on the stable feature and that will be the best option that you can for running the devices. Uh, also be aware if you're running a two or a two plus that now that they've started uh, the three, some of the software updates are gonna include firmware updates for your older devices and most likely you're gonna get a firmware update for the three 
pretty soon just as they kind of work through things because these are just getting out into the world. There will be an upgrade path starting in December if you've got a 2 or a 2 Plus or even in the old MPVI and you're looking to finally upgrade. Uh, specifically, keep in mind that Pro Features are now free on this. So if you do not have Pro Features and you're looking to go to Pro Features, don't get Pro Features for an old interface. Take that money and spend it on the upgrade path for the MPVI 3 because this is one of the bigger changes that we've had on the hardware side in a while because of the doubled memory and the increased speed on the standalone data logging. I really have gotten big into using the standalone data logging feature as of uh, recently. I like the ability of having this thing plugged in all the time and setting some of those start stop triggers, which we can do another video going over kind of how to set that up once we get this thing fired up. Uh, so I really enjoy being able to do that, not have to lug a, a laptop around all the time. It makes my life a lot easier in multiple ways. So those are the big things. If you have any questions, as always, hit up the comments down below. Big shout out uh, to HP Tuners for getting one of these over to us to check out finally. We'll be using it very soon. We're going to be setting up our... Uh, 442 ECU or PCM technically because it's a third gen. We'll be setting that up for a swap, which means we'll be disabling a lot of the stuff that's been deleted off the harness, things like that, you know, VATS, all that fun jazz. Stick around. We'll be using the MPVI 3 for that. Uh, you guys know the drill. Uh, if you have any questions, hit up the Patreon. Uh, you can go over to goatropegarage.com. You can buy some cool shirts. We got t-shirts down there. It's about time for us to design some new shirts. If you got any ideas, hit up the comments on shirts. And, uh, you know, thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.